So I see there's a couple of you guys here right now. I, I want to keep this lively. I want to keep it very informal. So I'm going to do a screen share. I'm going to literally do this from scratch. So you guys can see how quick this gets down here. Um, I know I have a certain time frame here, so we'll dive into obviously as far down the rabbit hole as you want to go. Um, but I'll kind of give you the gist and the, the generics that I have here. Uh, this is also assuming that when you get to job site, you have some generic elements. Uh, so what I've been providing you are, are what I call the templates. And I have a couple of those. We'll, we'll go through one or two of them just to show you how, how they work. Um, but ideally, you have this plethora of templates you can, you can draw from for your clients to do your shows. And then in the background, they should be providing a lower third or a logo, a bug, um, some kind of background content and things like that. And there's a couple of things that if we get to that point, we'll dive in and we'll we'll set them up. But um, I'm going to do a screen share. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. I'm always looking there. I have a, a particular setup today. I have some construction guys out here that are doing some stuff for lighting. But um, I have the computer here, another monitor here, and then I have you guys here. Um, trying to, you know, do it up a little bit here with the background. But uh, again, if you guys have any questions, I'll be watching in, in the side here and I'm gonna do a screen share real quick. And I'm gonna do this a long way a little bit just so I can show you what I'm doing here uh, as I do it. I'll, I'll talk very clearly about what I'm clicking on, what buttons I'm using. Uh, and if I miss anything or miss a step, uh, please go ahead and comment below and I will I will I'll, I'll retrace my steps to show you. So right now I'm clicking here to do a screen share uh, on my secondary monitor. So you guys should see me at the bottom here and then my screen should be full. Uh, if you guys are good with that, just give me a thumbs up or a comment in the chats, um, and I'll push forward from there. But you should be able to see my screen right now, which is the background, uh, which is a custom background I just created uh, for today's session. Um, this will go into dive into vMix. I have no comments, but I will assume, Ed, thanks for Omar as a rock star. I appreciate that, Ed. Uh, if anything, you are a better mentor than I am, so I appreciate the feedback. But I'm going to go ahead and open vMix here now. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing this from scratch. You guys can see... Uh, how this works out on my end and how kind of you can help you out. So I have nothing in VMix. I haven't pre proed anything other than some elements that I have that I will show you uh, in just a moment. So I'm going to go to bring this down a little bit and I've created what's called the theme pack. Uh, and I'll show you guys real quick. So this is what I'm going to give you afterwards is this template here. Uh, so seven up here in this verbiage makes makes more sense once you're started using this in the VMix. But seven up is seven speakers, eight speakers, uh, five up at the right hand side is four speakers here with the right, uh, five up the left-hand side is four speakers with the right-hand side. And these are all pre-built in here. You got them free after the class just for watching me do this. Uh, a one-up can be used for both a, a speaker or a PowerPoint in general. And then you have the one-up 16 by nine with the one-up left. So speaker left, um, PowerPoint in the, in the center there. Uh, and then vice versa on the right-hand side, left-hand side, up below middle center, two up for two speakers, four up for four speakers, uh, three speakers, so let's say a panel or PowerPoint, and then you can switch between you know each speaker however you'd like to. But this is the general, and then you also will have a template guide for the white versions of that. So you have a black version, which is mostly what I've been using, and so you have a white version, which can be hit or miss when you hit or miss when you're doing some keying stuff. But we'll talk about the keying in a little bit too, and I'll show you some ways to do that again if you have time. Um, but it's simply just take a white one, uh, go to the key section, add a background or a piece of content, whatever it is. It can even be from PowerPoint. And it'll, it'll create that cut for you, instantly giving you that ne next level kind of setup. And then we'll talk about lower thirds and bugs and how, uh, some ways that I do that. And again, I've created this one template here, this one packet for myself for today's event, because this is what you should be getting on job site or at least requesting from your clients. Um, and I'll even show you a way to uh, work around some of those things with PowerPoints and show you how I did it for this particular one today. So I'm going to click out of this and then, oh, sorry. And then you'll, you'll also get the impact extras. Um, so you can see mock male, uh, mock female, zooms one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you have the gallery overlay. Uh, and I can go into that a little bit too if we have time. But really what this is for is if you're doing um, vMix with a bunch of Zoom machines, what you can do is you can put zoom one, two, three, four, five, up to eight. Unfortunately, typically eight is the max for one port or one gigaport of uh, Ethernet and NDI or the safety zone. Anything past that, you might start running into some bugs and stuff like that. So you kind of want to have a, a better router at that point. But when we've started this, um, unless you're changing the PC name, this was just a quick visual so that when I hit NDI and went to see my feeds, I knew which machine was on which. Also, this is sized properly. So when you make just the background of your, of, your, of your computer, this mock image of a person will also fill your templates. So if you wanted to do that so that you can get that computer sized up properly, get the templates done properly uh, for ahead, ahead of time work, um, you can use this as well. So all you would do is, is take the... The mock templates, you would take those and you would uh, add them as, sorry, you'd add them as a background to your desktop or create the desktop background. And then you can use that uh, to, to size in your templates before a presenter comes in and you'll get pretty close to what that is. 
Uh, and again, these, what, what's good about the way these templates are going to work out, which, which we'll see in a second, is that these templates will ideally allow me some flexibility on the screen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in my camera. On, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to do a color bars first. All right, so I have color bars here. It's on program. I'm going to bring the second one to be the other camera I have here, which will be the camera internally to the vMix machine here. Uh, so I'm going to go to add inputs. I'm going to go to camera and I'm just going to use the integrated one. It's not going to look very great, guys. Uh, everything is in this room is set for this camera here. So I said look a little washed out, but I'm going to go ahead and go do the integrated camera here. I'm going to hit OK. And then you can see that it just popped up here now uh, and I'm here. So one thing I will say about the theme pack is if, if you have the time, you can see that I did a, a test here. So here's my elements. Here be my show mode. Go to elements. I'm going to go ahead and go to theme pack and I'm going to go to um, black and white for now. So right now I'm going to do the, the most typical, which would be this one, 69 with one up on left. And I'm just going to drag that right in there. Boom, that is there. It's a black on black, so it's a little hard to see, but it is there, I promise you. Uh, and I'll show you by clicking on it. Oops, sorry. And I'll show you by doing this. So you can see this template has a little bit of a, of a margin. So it's 1.50 of a margin error. So what you can do is you can put content here, in the in, which we'll go into a second. We'll put content here. And you can put PowerPoint here and you can have something static slowly move in the background. Again, add another dimension there or just blow it up to the right size. It'll still maintain that 60 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, so we'll go in that to a second as well. And then again, I'll go back into my theme pack graphics here. I'll go to my whites uh, in the element side and I'm going to add a 16 by 9, same one. Uh, we'll do the opposite one here for white. And then you can see that that's there. And again, same principles as before. You can see I have this little bit of a border here. Um, which I'll explain to you why I do that other than what I just said, but I'll show you always uh, some cool tricks with that. And then I'm going to go to my client elements, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to, I'm still in elements, sorry. I'm going to go to elements again. And I'm going to go, here's an AVE background element. I'm just going to drag that in there. Uh, here's some footage I'll drag in there. Here's a PowerPoint they're providing me. And here is a logo they're providing me. Now, I know a lot of you guys run into this where you don't kind of get all these little elements. Uh, and I, I encourage you to be proactive about that. So I'll show you what this is. So let's say your client has provided you a PowerPoint. And for this particular PowerPoint, I was able to, to determine that these elements, right, are individual. So this is a background and this is a individual element. Now, this is a great lower third for a lot of things that we're doing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and go to save as picture. And immediately that saves to my computer. I'll save that on a desktop. And you guys already see that I already have it embedded, but that's how quick it is to do that. So if, if you get content, whether it's a background or anything like that, and it's an element, you can pull right from a PowerPoint what you need sometimes if they're not providing it. And that's a cool little trick that I do a lot of the times because a lot of times clients don't provide it. They just give me a PowerPoint. And if I get lucky, they have the elements individually set up and I can pull from that very, very quickly. Uh, and it's just, again, a quick way to do it. I'm proactive about it. I, uh, I show the representation, you know, just because that's that's the level I want to present to the client. And they either say yes or no, and it's a quick and it's a quick solve for me. So I don't want to save any changes I made to that PowerPoint, but it's in there. And then again, now I'm in here. We'll go full screen. We have, let's say the gist of what we got going on is here. Um, so I'm going to add a a blank box, right? We'll go to show, we'll add a blank, right? And I'm gonna go back to elements real quick. So I know this is a 60 minute with a one up. So a PowerPoint with a person, PowerPoint with a person on the right hand side. This is a background, or maybe I can use this as one of my keys. Keys Again, another background, or I can use it as a key. It's, it's a slow moving image. It's got some content, right? And we're gonna assume for this scenario today that the client gave me this content. We're gonna pause that. And again, I'm just uh, left clicking on a mouse right now. So nothing too crazy. Um, I've dumped it into this element section. And if you guys don't know how to do this, you could just right click. So if you right click on this, it'll go and open these up and you can add to whatever you need or add, or add additional ones if you need more. Let's say day two, right? Day two, hit OK, left click on the mouse. And now I've added additional tabs that I may need. Um, and these are color coordinated. And as well, if you have your own color codes, you can add that down here, double click and change your colors here. So again, I can double click, get more color options, and it, it adds more to what I have here. Uh, the gray area is always your home, and it'll always be the same. All your content we dump there. This page in particular gets really crowded. A lot of things happen in here. I don't come through it too much. But what I want to make sure when we're here is that 
everything is labeled properly. We'll go over that, why that's important. So this says color bars, which I can see what that is. I know what that is visually, integrated camera. I know what this is because I saw the chart, all right, 69, I have a one up. I know what this one on the right-hand side, this is the white version. I know this is background. Uh, so this is an AVE background, AVE background two. I'm gonna rename this as, uh, as an MOV because it says that there, but I want it to be much quicker when I'm in my, my section. And again, we'll see why that's more important in a second. And I'm just gonna call this MOV background, right? Put a little period there. Now it's called MOV background here. I just updated that. Evolve, which is the PowerPoint. I'll leave that the way it is. I'm going to right click on this just to get ahead of the game here. I'm going to turn off. This is always default, by the way. It always does this automatically, but I'm going to turn off that transition time. I'll leave it on fader. I'll leave the duration because it didn't do anything until I have it do something. Um, I have the logo here and I have a blank that I've created and I'm going to call this scene one. Okay. And that way I know that this, this is a blank canvas. I can do what I need to do in here. So again, I've created this, I'll go to my show mode and let's say this is the first look that my client wants. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go back to the cog wheel here. I we'll click on that, and I'm going to go to the layer multi view, and then real quick, it's depending on you, and I'll show you why why I'm saying this in a second. There's two ways you can do lower thirds. You can do the evolve logo here, right, which would be always present only in this particular input, which would be scene one, or I can leave this blank. I typically leave this blank in case for whatever reason there's a presenter or a company that may be getting added last minute or changed out. I can do this so that it always shows up just for this particular scenario or for this one particular speaker who wanted X, Y, Z, um, lower thirds or a bug. Um, cause now that the client knows about it, they're obviously gonna offer it to everybody. And maybe this is that scenario where, Hey, just this one time for this one person at this one scenario, we need to have that up for when he's doing this. Got it. So I always in my SOP do this on nine. I'm going to take my integrated, uh, and you can see that it's not there. Sorry. You can take my integrated and I'll do the white one. Um, I'll put it here now. Those backgrounds I was telling you about, right? So I have that slow moving movie. I could add that to my background, but you can see it's there. And it, it wouldn't be super present, right? But it'd be just, just enough of something going on to give that added layer of something. So let's say I was doing a gala. Um, this would be great, right? That black and gold is kind of really popular. Or maybe I could get some something in the background that's glittering and put that just as, a, as, a, as an effect for the edges of the screen, right? Not omnipresent in the middle of it, but on the edge sides of it. Um, is what I do. So now on layer two, I'm going to add the camera, right? Because remember, remember how layers work is this is my bottom most layer and this is my top most layer. So I'm going to go to two and I'm going to add my camera, integrated camera. And I'm going to go to my settings here real quick. And I'm going to size this down very, very quickly and just move it into place. Now, what's cool about doing it this way is that because my la this template layer is in front of the camera layer, if my presenter is sitting here at any point, right, I'm going to size this up. And I like this right about here. I'm going to add the crop on to get my, my shot into that position a little better. Right there. So now I can see that I'm standing here, but let's say, and this happens all the time, right? Now I'm looking over here, I'm directing it to you. My client starts to do this kind of shift off. I can go to full screen PowerPoint or full screen uh, camera. And in this template, I can move him around so he could stay like this. And let's say he's he's got comfortable now. Now he's in his he's in his groove. He's talking. He's mentoring. Whatever it is, I can just move this over without moving anything else around, and I have this flexibility to send him back up without him knowing the difference. So a lot of times, what ends up happening, and the reason I did it this way is that a, a lot of clients would end up essentially moving themselves or getting more comfortable than what we originally talked about on the pre-pro side, and I'd have to move them around. If I did the templates, if I did the the video on top of something it wasn't as easy to do and I had to redo my cropping. Whereas if I had this in front, the template in front of my camera, I have more flexibility, not a lot, but a little bit. And it's enough to get me into place sometimes. So I'm kind of stuck in this position now because I'm here, I've readjusted it. Um, so I'm gonna stay here as much as I can. But what I'll show you now is I'll go back to my multi-view, right? Go back to my multi-view and now I'm gonna go to another layer. And I, I generally try to skip one or the other. I'm gonna go to the next layer and I'm gonna add that PowerPoint. So let me go to my PowerPoint and we'll do PowerPoint, right? And again, I'm going to click on edit real quick. I'm going to size down. And now, so here's a problem, right? And this run, you run into this. This is kind of a black on black. Um, but what vMix offers is, is a border option. So border, the border is one. Generally, I do five because that's pretty big. And I'll do radius of five. 
and I'm going to blow this up now full screen because uh, VMix isn't a true scaler. VMix is, is a digital scaling, so it's a manipulation of the content. But now I have this nice border here, which also now coincidentally right, is white, so it won't work with the white. So I want to change that. So again, I'm going to go to color, double click, and I'm going to go to red because I know red is going to be a distinctive, clear, clear difference. And I'm going to go to zoom. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. So I can see, if I go a little right there, I'm at a point where I lost something. So I have still some playroom, right? I don't need to be fine-tuned yet. I'm going to move this to position, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Oh, all right. So I've lost red. I've lost red, but I still have a little bit of red here. You guys can see that. I'm going to left-click, and I'm going to mouse – or sorry, not mouse. I'm going to arrow key over to the left. So I've just used my arrows by holding down the left key, the left button on the mouse. I've, left, I've gone to the arrow key left, and now I position myself pretty well within this PowerPoint, I think. Um, and I'm, I'm good with that. So I would call this done. Scene one is done. Let's say I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put the, whoops, I'm going to put this into my show mode. So I want, because I want to go at some point full screen on camera, right? And now let's say we start off with a thing, right? So I take, I go live. Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Omar Colombo, the director of education at Evolve Technologies and the founder of AB Educate. So good to be here. I got a quick PowerPoint I wanted to go to. And as I'm getting this PowerPoint up, I click here and now we're here. Right. And now you can see this subtle background is moving. Right. The subtleness in the background. I haven't taken away from anything here. I'm talking here. Some people like on the left, right side. I've always thought that was weird, but I'm left handed. I'd rather be on the left hand side. But then let's say we're doing this right. As we're going through, I'm talking about the PowerPoint and we're going to go to the, you know, go to the next one. And let's say we go to this one real quick and it's there. And then I go back to show like, hey, so we're doing some things here. And as we're talking to each other, I wanted to show you this this really key point here. Um, about the immersive side of what we're doing here. And, you know, just real quick, I want to make a note of X, Y, Z. As I'm in this portion here where I'm back to full screen on him and he's talking, as the operator, I can go back over here and change anything I need to. Or I can do some stuff here where I want to fade back into it. I can do a merge where I come up full screen. Maybe some clients like that, some, some don't. If um, I can notice, you know, what I noticed a little ago while I was talking, I was clicking that I didn't have the PowerPoint here. So, hey, you know what, while he's doing his thing, let me go back to my homepage, uh, get that PowerPoint, and I'm going to put that PowerPoint in my show mode. So I'm going to put that on green. Now, it still stays here, but when I go back to show, it is here. So now my camera is here. My, this is here. So now I'm in this window for a little bit. He's talking about a particular slide, and then now he's just kind of rambling, right? So I wanna, might, might want to go full screen. Again, I could do the merge, which takes a full screen. I can do the fade here, or I can just cut to it real quick. And, you know, just a quick – he's talking about this slide – let him do his thing, um, and then he's going to jump to the next slide, right? He's going to jump to the LED slide, and oh, you know what? Now he just jumped to that. Let me ping pong, right? So let me come back to him. I'll go to a fade, so it's not just an abrupt cut. And now he's talking again. And he's talking about that slide, and then you kind of let that run through. So this is kind of one way you can do the setup, and as you're doing this, it's very quick to, man to manipulate things. However, obviously, you may not want that background option. So again, it's very simple to go to that scene that I created, Right, not manipulating the original content, but that scene that was created, and go to that scene, and go back to my my layers. If you if you're having trouble remembering stuff, and again, I'm going the long process here so you guys can see it. I can go back to my which is always for me nine. Right, click on nine. Here's all my content. You see the background videos there. Everything's positioned out. You could also do this as a, as a template to get your stuff sized properly to be in the right locations if you wanted to. Um, I've had clients who, who don't need this, but I'll use it as a way to to put my placeholders in place for what I need, all right? Uh, so another thing I can do though now is I can go to edit and I can just size this up. I know it's about 1.5, oh, see, there you go. So I'm a little too big already. There we go. So I'm about where I need to be at. I'm gonna size up, oops, reset that. Again, I'm going to use the border here. I'm going to go full screen because I want to see all the pixels. And I'm going to pick, we'll pick a light red, almost a pink, right? And then we'll do five. And we'll do five. And now I, I don't see that border anywhere. Well, I might be right there a little bit, right? So I'm going to go to zoom out a little more. I think I'm in a good spot if I leave it there. A little bit more. 
There we go. We're sized up. My, my PowerPoint needs to be blown up a little bit. My video needs to be blown up a little bit. But again, I have those borders that I created. It gives me a quick troubleshooting to know what isn't aligned and what is aligned visually. All right, so I can go back to my multi viewer now. I can click on the Evolve slide, go to here, and just again zoom it out. Again, so I'm left clicking the zoom and I'm zooming out and I've lost the thing. So I'm going to come to the right. I'm arrowing around here just to give me a little more precise on the numbers. So there, I'm pretty much even around. I'm just going to blow it up now and it should all at the same time fill in the slots. There we go. Might have gone one too much. So I can come back a little bit. There we go. I'm there. And then again, if I forgot what number I want, integrate a camera, which I always do it on two. Uh, go to edit. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just size it up real quick. And boom, I'm done. For me, that's good enough. I have to get back to the show mode, right? So this is good. And then I close out of this. And now I'm already here. I'm ready to go. The downside is if this was a real show, I just did that all live. They would have all seen that. But that's there. Um, Real quick, I see Ed dropped a comment here. Layer arrangement can determine the workflow. These templates work like a mask. Very cool. Appreciate that. Yes, they are a mask. You don't need to use them uh, once you're live. You could take them away, like I just showed you guys a second ago, just to get your stuff into position. If you have a background already given to you and you have a um, a kind of idea done, you can do this and then mask it into place the sizes that you want. You can do that option as well. Um, I don't particularly like doing it this way where I have a background layer, a pip layer, and a window layer because then I'm limited uh, once I'm live to moving things around. My look is kind of where it is. And if I have to move someone around, I have to redo my masking, redo my positioning versus if I have this on, I can do this whatever needs to get done. Now, the one thing we talked about that I went past for a second here was we talked about how these kind of jump on each other. So, so to Ed's comment here, sorry, do you have a Luma key over these templates? Yes, the white ones. You can Luma key onto directly. Um, you will have some limitations as far as the content given to you and what the color is. And there's two ways to do that. I'll dive into it a little bit, uh, the one quick way, which most people do, um, which give you black and white option, a black and white option or the colored way. Uh, the whites in particular, um, the reason I made it this way is that the whites will key out over content immediately. Uh, so if you have a, a background, which we'll, we'll hopefully get into, um, if you have a background that does that, you can literally just put this template into that into that keyer and it'll key out the image for you. So you'll have this with whatever the background content is. Instead of doing this, where this is what I see most happen, is guys will get a background, they'll put a pip, they'll size it up into place, and then they'll put this in here and then they'll get rid of it. It's, again, that is an option. It's not wrong, but that is a, that is a way to do it. Um, I prefer doing this. So real quick, before I jump into Ed's thing here, um, I know we're kind of running short on time, but real quick before I jump into Ed's, uh, when it comes to logos, again, you can see that even with me explaining this, I still got this done relatively quickly. And the more you do this, the quicker you'll get at it. Um, but So we have also a logo that we created. Now, there's two ways to do this. The way I prefer is to do it this way. I would generally leave this up in pre. Um, I have the, I generally use the black one more than the white ones. The white ones I usually key out. Um, but I will take this logo. I'm going to size it up here. And I'm going to actually start. I'm going to hit one to take me live here for a second uh, another way to do that is to click sorry let's do this a different way just so you guys can see you can do this and if you right click on a mouse it'll send up your content to the preview side so and i, and I want to be clear when you're in here i'm going to show you this you have assuming seemingly 10 layers but in reality i also have an 11th layer or the main background layer Right. This is whatever that original content is, is which is why we do the blank one or a new one so that we get so that additional background, right? That that background we can't touch becomes part of that equation. Um, sorry, so I'm gonna right click on this so I can see what I'm doing here and I'm gonna scale it like I would anything else. I'm gonna move my, my screen a little bit and I'm gonna bring this down. And that's about a good size for me. Obviously, it's a white, it's a white lettering, so not the best against against white on white. So I might need to get a different one. Um, but just for the quickness of what we're doing here, I'm gonna go ahead and change some things. Uh, you know what? Client wants the white one. Let's just say the client wants to leave it like that. Let me not, let me not get too funky and do it. But you can see, again, I hit white, I hit, sorry, I hit the right on the mouse to clear it. And then I hit it again to go live with it. All right, so now this is here. So no matter what I do, these four layers are in addition 
to the 10 layers of an input. And these are on top of those 10 layers. So I can use this in addition to another four and I would put this on a hotkey for myself so that I can access this quickly. So this would be on, an, uh, for me, I make it on, on a keypad or on my stream deck, I'd make this so that it was on an overlay, uh, which would be down here from here. So one, two, three, four, I would assign one of these overlay buttons to this one in particular. So I had, I had a hotkey functionalities to take that and take it down when I didn't need it. And what I mean by this is that now that one is active, I can go to anything else and that one will stay there. See how it's always there? No matter what I switch to, it'll be there until I key it off. This will always stay in that corner for the live viewer and I can key it off. Another way though, is because I've now done the sizing on the actual element itself. So this is a, this is a kind of a downside you can think about because I've manipulated this one instead of leaving the original one the way it was and creating a virtual one that I can manipulate. Now, anything that I assigned this layer to is now that size. So again, I can go back into the show mode and let's say this particular client is, is evolve, right? And they want to do this. And let's say, you know what? We don't want to see the, the layer anymore. I can go back to my camera, all right? And I can crop this into place. So it's about here and it's about here, right? Oops, sorry. I can now get rid of my template. So again, I'm looking here because I forgot, get rid of nine. Let's say they like that. I would get rid of the border, obviously. So come back to the slide deck. Okay, well, I don't need the border anymore. This is kind of what they want. And now let's say for this particular client for Evolve, it is this. So now that 10th layer I left open, again, SOP, right? So always camera on two, template on nine, and then your PowerPoint, whatever you want, anywhere you want to between that. I can go here and put the logo, and now it only follows this one. So you see the logo's there. If I go to anything else, the logo's not there. So that's two ways you can do it. I prefer doing the overlay method because it's a little quicker, um, but you might need this. This works out really well when you have multiple speakers from different companies that are presenting and they can have their own look and their own, their own essentially uh, style without it affecting the rest of the show or affecting your operator to remember multiple things. You just embed it into his section there and let it, let it go. Um, but if you needed that to be, uh, you know, full time across the board, again, go ahead and get rid of that there. I need to be full time. I'd go back to here, put it on my layer one. Oops, I lost it. There we go. Put it on my layer one, and now no matter what I do, it is always going to be at that uppermost layer uh, for my for my host to use. So this is the template. It's very quick and easy. Um, very simple to use. You have multiple options. Uh, and I've only gone through one of these, but this is the general idea of what we're doing here uh, with these templates, right? So I'll real quick, Edison, if you need different sizes of positions of a bug, you can recreate virtual inputs of the original and manipulate those virtual inputs instead of the original. Yes, so to what Ed is saying here real quick, sorry, I meant to make that bigger for you. So if I went back to here and I went to my positioning, right? Go back to my main, cause that was what it was. And I reset this, reset this or reset them all. Um, there's two ways to do this. I can either click here in general, go to virtual, create virtual input, which is now created another input that I can manipulate this one, right? To where I want it to be. It's a little bit of warping that just happened there or size differencing, but I can still manipulate it. And now you can see this one, which needs to be stretched out, is done or close that out. Again, with, with the mouse in hand, I can right click and create virtual input. So a faster way to do that, right? Close that out. Again, I'm gonna, I'll show this one, I'll do this one real quick. Now you guys know the process, right? So again, I'm gonna come into here, go to position. I, I wanna size this up properly. So I'm good with that, right? Because again, it's, it's real quick. If I'm doing multiples of these, I wanna make sure that I remember this number here. So 1.059, right? That's what I did. I'll have to do that across the board if this is the method I have to do. Come back here. I'm going to do my template on nine. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm in my template. I already messed up. See? Position will reset this. Go back to my show. I will create a blank. And I'll go th through this as fast as I would do it, right? So go to layer. I'm going to create my black here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my one real quick. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna go to one real quick. I'm gonna put the color bar so I can see something. 
I'm gonna go to two real quick, integrated camera. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. Go ahead and crop. And then I'm gonna to go to my layers again, right? So I'm on nine, I'm gonna make this 1.59. Go back to my position. Now uh, I got this here, got this here. I'm gonna put the uh, PowerPoint right here. Got that sized up. Looks like my camera needs to be a size a little bit better. So, all right, going back here to check which one I'm on. I'm gonna size this up real quick. And the thing is, I don't, so the crop is that if I take this crop off on this side, because I'm behind the PowerPoint, it, it's not there. And because you close this one off, you can take this off now. And I don't even need the crop because no one could tell that there's, there's a need of it. So I can move this around even quicker. Now, again, this PowerPoint's done. I'm up and ready to go. So now I can take that. This is my, I'm gonna call this scene two. That took me about what? Maybe two minutes. Uh, once I knew what I was doing, right? Two minutes, give or take. I've got that there. I can go ahead and cut that to go full screen. As we're talking presentation, I can go ahead and cut to the cut to the speaker going on, and then cut back to this going on, and then cut to the PowerPoint going on, and then you know fade back to this going on. Um, and then again, maybe for this present presentation, they want to see a a. Uh, a lower third, right? So I, we have to go back to here. Uh, I'll create a virtual input. Again, I'm gonna do it on the right-hand side. So right-click in the mouse. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna bring it down to what I need to see. Whoops. Make it a little bit smaller. Down to this corner. I'm just guesstimating here. So let's say around here, safety zone. And again, I will click on one. And now it's there. That took me maybe a total of five minutes with trying to troubleshoot a couple of things here just for necessity for the client. So um, so you can see how quick this is. Once you, once you kind of get your method down, when it comes to building these out, it's very, very quick. Uh, and you can do this for multiple different things. Um, this is helps you out. And again, if, if you if you you can use a template with it as part of the scene so that you don't just have empty space, or you individually just as a way of a template guide to get you in place. Because now I can go to my scene two, right? Go to scene two, and I can get rid of this now that I'm here. And it's just this background, this and this. And now I might need to put the crop back on because I got rid of it. But if the crop wasn't there, I could always go to this position and move my presenter around wherever I needed to to line them back up. So you see that, so real quick, I think I have a few more minutes, right? Let's say I do. So real quick, we'll dive into this. Um, I'll show you like a quick down and dirty right here. So if I click here, we go to color key. Actually, let me bring it up first. Bring this up over here. I'm gonna go to color key. And we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab a background here. Yeah, you know what? I need a different background. Let me grab one more assets. I'm looking for a one particular just to show you guys. Uh, let's just use this one. 
All right, so we've got this one called Networking AV Tech Talks, right? So I'm gonna go here real quick. And we're gonna go to Networking AV Tech Talks. So again, down and dirty, black and white. I've, all I did was take that Luma, Luma key. I didn't do anything but add that manipulation to the original file, which created this. Um, obviously some of these colors are in that range where it gets, it gets keyed out. Um, but that's where we're at here. So you can see this is here. All right, so I'm gonna go back into here real quick. I'm gonna turn that off, none. And then we'll go down here, go to the key and we'll put in the right side. And as you can see, my cutouts are there already. So I've taken that Luma key and I've dropped it into that image that the client gave me and I've created a mask using their content. Now, I will say, depending on the color schemes they give you, you may or may, it may or may not be effective sometimes because sometimes those colors just, you know, they're, they're too close to each other. Um, but essentially the whites should be able to fill out or cut out any background you are given. So you can always do this template method. Uh, and that's what Ed was talking about a little bit earlier. This is why I've created the white ones. The black ones are just generic. Hey, I, I don't really need that. I don't, I'm okay with it. Um, here's a, you know, here's a way to, Get what you have and still have that ability to use a template so you can put your PowerPoint and your and your images behind it. Uh, and it is that simple. So again, I'll go through that process again, right? I, I you guys saw me just dump this in here. This is a separate layer, right? Here's my original. I just clicked on this cogwheel, I went to color key, color fill, and I picked the verbiage that was correct. So these are the white ones. I'll show you how you try to use the black. Nothing, right? Because I can't key to that. I need to key to a white. So here it is. And now anything not in that range is keyed out automatically. And again, I can now take this piece of content that I just brought in here, right? I can now add in my layers side. I can go and do, sorry, I need to create a new one. Uh, so go back to my show. I'll create a new blank. We'll call this scene three. I'll go to my layer positions, and now my template is that networking one. Here's my template. And again, I'll go to two, I'll put in my camera, size it down, get it into place, All right, it's a little too small. And because I have a template, I don't have to be as accurate. I, I can move faster. If I need to be accurate, I need time, right? Go back here, go to my PowerPoint. I'm gonna put this here for now, I'll go to PowerPoint. And again, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna size it down. And now it's like this weird black on dark stuff. So I'm gonna put the border on so I can see what's going on. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do red because it's a distinctive, I can't see that color, five. So yeah, so I'm way over here. And again, it's, I'm, I'm talking about speed for right now. So this is pretty good. I don't have to be so accurate, right? And I'm there. Um, you may want to do the crop, right? Because I left this out here. Oops. Camera, go to crop. Now I've created a whole new look with the client's background, already with the template form provided for me, so I can just speed through it. It's ready to go. And I still have one on. I'll take the Evolve off because now it's, an AV, it's AV's company. I can do that. And again, I have this little black here, which is a safety zone for when you're streaming out live. Or if it's not too much, you can just, again, size it up, 1.59, fills up the gap. Or I could put still a video back there, right, because I have the space for it. I can come back here. I can put that, that video we had, uh, which is a movie, right? And now I just have this subtle in the background Oh, is it not playing? Oh, I got to take it, sorry. Now there's a subtle just movement in the background. It isn't taken away from anything, but it's adding this extra element of keeping my attention onto the screen um, while I'm doing this. So that's what the white ones are for. And again, you have different templates. We'll, 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 we can show that again, right? At this point, this is kind of like, we've gone over the template minus individual ones. If you guys wanted to see any other ones that we had, You let me know. 
So here's all the other options we have. And again, these are all the same way. Um, you, can, you can use the whites to cut out a background or you can use the black ones themselves just to give you an alignment position. Um, makes the job much quicker and easier. You can see once you get the workflow down, it took me less than five minutes to get it done. So you could think about five minutes per scenario. And with the template in front of you, this allows you to adjust things and modify things when you're not on screen very, very quickly, um, which is a huge time saver for anybody who's done anything with vMix. It helps. Yes. Thank you, Ed. These templates are great time savers. Trust me, they, they really do help and they really make things very quickly. I, I purposely did this whole session with you guys to show you how quick it is. Um, obviously, we took a little time to explain the process and what's going on here. Um, the other thing I just want to touch on one more time, um, I'm pretty sure I'm short on time, but this gallery overlay, if you're doing pre-pro, this is a transparent gallery overlay, which is on red. This is actually got from a buddy of mine named Jeff. Um, this is a great way for people who are kind of not understanding that, that centered position just to get them in there. So if you if you have a client that comes in, and again, this is if you have the pre-pro side, right? You had a client that's coming in and they're just, they're not getting it. And you're like, hey, yeah, center up. And they're like, oh, you mean like this? What, you know, I don't understand what to do. If you're sending them a, a, a like a feedback to them, you can just take this and say, hey, you know what? Can you just line up to that? Oh, they always get this. Oh, oh yeah, that makes sense right here, yeah? Yep, hey, that's good. You're within that frame. Thank you very much. Take it off and you're done. That's included in that pack you guys are gonna get. Uh, it's a very quick way to just kind of get things going and get people involved and engaged and Again, speed up your workflow to do your job faster and better and quicker, more effective, more efficiently for your clients. Uh, so when those challenges happen and they come at you, um, you can very quickly solve and, and move forward. Um, so I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, so you guys, I can just check your comments here real quick and uh, see if you guys had anything in particular. Uh, so now we're back on the good camera. <laughs> but um, Ed, Ed made some great comments here. We talked about the multiple uses of them. We talked about how you can use them as a template for placements. We talked about how you can use them as a, a way to add value to your clients and what they're doing, other than just a generic background, a generic, a generic PowerPoint, a generic location. Um, we also talked a little bit about how you can use those to either put this in place or use them into your advantage, add lower thirds, uh, different ways to do that, right? Embed it into the, indi in the individual scene for that person or put it as an overlay. Um, one of the things I want to stress is, there's a lot more functionality we can dive into with these templates, um, but it's, it's up to your creativity. So, you know, I showed you the what I think is the most generic that gets used that I use a lot. Um, but when it comes to those other ones where you have the the people talking, right? If you get the white one and the, there's a theme for this for the show, there's a there's a, a, a generic theme that constantly gets used. Get a copy of that, whatever that logo is, and key it out. Key it out and use that as part of what's going on. If it's not a prominent all the time logo, why not? Right? It, it just adds value for you and for you the client. Uh, Ed says, it's a pleasure to see the master work. Thank you, Ed. It's it's an honor to be called that. Uh, I definitely get a lot of this credit from you. You and me have troubleshooted so many things and saw so many weird problems on the video and the audio side that, uh, you know, we're just a powerhouse together that, uh, you know, I, I'm honored you would say that. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I do have a camera here. I have a laptop here and another one over here. So I apologize. My eyes are kind of bouncing around. But if anybody has any other questions or any other insights or, or thoughts, or do you want me to go over anything? Uh, let me know in the comments here. I'm obviously here until you don't want me anymore. And then uh, and then I'm gone for the day. But uh, we will get you this template. You'll get all those things individually. I uh, highly recommend if you guys are in the pre-pro side and, or you get the time to put those backgrounds on a computer. It'll save you so much time for when you're doing these Zoom, these Zoom calls. All you got to do is take that template and size it up to where you want to. And about 9 out of 10, that, that sizing you get for your computer in that PIP window will be the, about the exact same size. And all the dimensions are correct for the templates that I'm providing you. They're all 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Um, unfortunately, sorry, not 4 by 3, 16 by 9 on both ends uh, for PowerPoint and for cameras. They're, um, I haven't done too much stuff with 4 by 3 for cameras or long per, um, horizontals for cameras. I haven't gotten a lot of requests for that. But if you guys had a request for that, send me an email. I'd love to update this VMAX and create another one. I had to do that once ever in the last three years, so I don't see the necessity for it. But if you guys have seen a lot of that, I'm not the only operator out there. Let me know. I'll create more content for it. Um, but again, these are just to help you get really quickly get out there, get in there, and, and get moving. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed my VMIX session. <laughs> I know we got a few more minutes. Um, if there's anything you want to review or go over or look at again, let me know, and I'll, I'll pop it back up here. But I think I covered everything pretty quickly. Um, and again, I think showing you from scratch just um, proves how, how quickly you guys can pick up on this and get going. Um, 
Yeah, that's all I got. Joe, you still around? I'll check in the comments, see if I'm missing anything, but I see is there. Ed's here. Thanks for being here. Um, Sari Acedo is here. Hi. Good to meet you. Uh, sorry if I'm missing. I think I got everybody here, right? Hello. Uh, Marcus, he was here as well. Uh, Ed's, you know, Ed and me go back for a little time. Um, I think I got everything done. Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm going to look. Oh, OK. Here's another thing we can go over, too. So if you guys. So Edemy have this. This isn't part of this, but Edemy have a a template for vMix, which is to speed up your again, speed up your workflow. You come to a new job site. You maybe not have your machine, but you're running a machine. You upload a kind of a template. And in this template, I have these theme packs, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, this is part of that theme pack, by the way. These they're called display icons. Go to that. So these are called display icons. So A, B, graphics, graphics, theme, VTA, VTB, VTC, VTD. So videos, whatever the theme is, graphics one and two, A, A, um, A and B. So what you can do with this is if you I don't think I have it on here, but if I do, let's see if I have it on here. I'm going to dive into this just so you guys can see it. If you guys are on it, are, are doing these shows live, I got this idea from Brian, a friend of mine. And it's honestly, it's a game changer. So if I have this file, yep, vMix default. This is the original file with all the craziness in it. I'm going to show you guys this. It wasn't part of the curriculum, but I want to give it out there just so you guys have an idea. So that is fine. Just going to do a reboot real quick, and then it'll show up as my stuff. So here is my generic workflow for a lot of stuff. So DSM file, uh, DSM returns, already pre-populated. My toolbox, which is little tools that I use. Sorry, toolbox, that's, so these are returns, and then toolbox is a blank, which you can change by doing nothing, mouse click does nothing, but it allows me to have this separation. So toolbox is empty bar, studio camera, which would auto connect uh, in my settings here. My timer, my default already built and programmed the timer, so I don't have to redo it every time I'm doing a show. The microphone, which is already pre-built and done on the computer. Program capture, which is again already populated as I populate my content. The white border, which is another way you, if you are not doing uh, the template option and you want to add again another level of create another level of, of finesse for your client, you just create a white border and you mask that onto anything you want. This is transparent white border. Uh, and then you get into these nine box, the black box, mics two, three, and four if you're doing more advanced audio settings. So you can see some of that's here already. And then you see callers, right? So callers is nothing. It's so caller one. Um, honestly, this has started to change a lot. Previously, it was okay to keep it, but uh, caller one is kind of my locked in number that I always use. It's worked for me. And then graphics would go into these places. Graphics one, graphics two, uh, theme defaults. So when I upload content, come here, go to change, and then add exactly what that's supposed to be into that file so that all the rest of my pre-built content auto-populates. Again, this is just another time saver for me. So you guys have those templates. I highly recommend you set up your, your ideal workflow. You pre-save all this stuff. Your first about 40, give or take, because your calls will expand that. And definitely want, you want to add your calls before you do anything else here, because that'll change all your numbers around which you change things down the road. But uh, if I have any graphics, they go here. If I have any uh, videos that are coming in either from me directly or from somebody else, they get put into here. And again, click here, click on change. Whoops, click change. Go to my go to my video section. Ah, my brain's not working. Video, and then browse. Click on that, and it'll take over this this section here. And then if you go down here, some of that stuff is already pre-built into here. And again, I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, so Charlie Putin is is my go-to song. 
I'm a big fan of this music. Uh, it's called Betty Boo. If you guys haven't heard of it, huge fan. <laughs> um, that's just kind of my default music to, to check audio feeds going in and out of stuff. And then uh, uh, DSM presets. So again, this would be like a return to a client. These are already pre-built for me, so they're ready to go. Um, my lower thirds, which is a couple of things here that are just pre-built, ready to go. I would drop any lower thirds that I got into here or add my own to there. And then my presets. So presets one, two, three, four, five, which has all these looks, seven, eight. And you could tell, obviously, presets one through nine would be for my callers. Um, so I have caller one pre-programmed. Sorry. So all the black. Right, they're all the same right now because I, I had to delete the other ones. But as you add them, you could just change population here, and they're already sized for me, which is another way to speed things up because these are already pre-sized, pre-done, so they uh, they pop up for you here. And again, I will bring this down. So I know it looks a little crazy. You can see it, it, it doesn't take up too much processing power on my machine. It's, it's not super bad. Go ahead and hide this. Um, but it does save me uh, pre-pro. So blank, blank, audio, and then uh, layers. So layers are usually things that I create last minute for a client. It's so my main, my presets, my DSM presets, which is what I'm sending out to clients. And you can see in here, I'll show you this without resetting it. NDIs are all on, so these are my return feeds where they're coming from, one and two are always set to this, which is why the first ones I had were what they were. And then my multi goes out here and I can you know, obviously manipulate these whatever I need to on show site. My, my preferred multi layout, which is just a feed of all my stuff. And then graphics get dumped into here. If I need to add more, they, they get added here. Video elements, whether it's uh, input to me or whether it's me doing them internally. Audio elements get added to here, and then my toolbox of things that I could use on the fly. Um, so I highly recommend when you guys get this template pack, put them in a vMix file. Sorry, highly recommend when you guys get a template, put them in a vMix file, put them in an order that makes sense for you, uh, put them in a way that that op operationally makes sense for you, so that that verbiage is real quick to understand. So when you're doing 16 by 9 one up, is it left or right? It's just, you know, what does the client want? Oh, it's on the left hand side. Cool. So it's these. Let me just use these ones that I need here. Um, another thing you guys will do is if you do, I'm actually gonna look at it first because I haven't, I haven't touched it in a while. Yeah, so I'll show you this as well. Another reason you wanna set it up that way with the blanks and the spacing is so that when you do your shortcuts, your shortcuts are very easy to create because you have this information. So you can see I'm, I'm a big um, keyboard user for my shortcuts. But again, these are pre-built. So if you have, a, a, a again, a pre-built show, think about an Aqualon or an E2 or an S3 or a Spider even, you don't want to just show up on a new machine and do exactly, you know, from scratch, start all your process over. You want to really get into getting yourself set up and ready to go as fast as possible. And the best way to do that is to create a template for yourself that works for your workflow. Um, so this kind of like, when I'm doing this, this is, this is my SOP for how I need to run through this process. And I've created a couple different versions of this. I'll get out to lead here. I've created a couple different versions depending on my uh, sh show. Um, version one, the original one, and then version two is a little bit a different setup because of what I was doing, particularly for the streaming side versus version one, which is, I'm sorry, version one was just original streaming only. Version two, um, then when they added the, oh, if you guys don't know about that, when they added the vMix uh, mix, mixer, that opened up a plethora of things that you guys could do, um, which I had to incorporate that. So I created a new file so that when I didn't need that option, I had the ability. So mix. So a mixer is an additional, think of it as an ME inside of your vMix. And these mixers can be assigned on shortcuts and they can be assigned to outputs. So I can, I can control a show. I can control here one, and then I can send this mixer which has to be run through like a stream deck, for example, in another, in another, in another, uh, sorry, in another place. I could send this mix to somewhere else, but this has to all be controlled through a, uh, through a system, through a separate, like a stream deck or in hotkeys, because if not, you gotta do it this way. And then it, would get, it becomes complicated. 
but uh, I will set the screen share. Uh, Ed has naming inputs is important too. And when creating shortcuts or using companion on a stream deck, using the name rather than the input number so your programming doesn't get messed up if you move inputs around. 100% agreed. And hence why I was saying that template that I created, the reason it's in that order is because that's the way I want to think about how to process things and put things in there. And it's so that if I add, let's say for the caller example, add those callers, my numbers will change, which will change my shortcuts around. But it's faster for me to um, update those if I know the order that I'm going in. So that when I go to my shortcuts to do that order, um, I'm very quick at adjusting those numbers because then it becomes, here's this, let me modify it to this. You know, and now it's input, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, some mental math in your head, but, but not too complicated. Also, you just look at the number of what it changed to. Hey, my shortcut key went from 39 to 48. So I need, I need to change from this, this down um, by eight numbers, right? So, and then you, just, you wrote down the line. Um, that's pretty much everything I got. I don't got anything else to give. At this point, I think I think as you guys have covered um, all my tips and tricks as far as speeding up and stuff on the video side. The audio side gets much more complicated. That's where Ed would come in because I'd be calling him for all kinds of stuff because I kept I was having tons of odd problems like the rest of you guys. Um, and Ed and me would solve things all the time. But uh, those templates are a real game changer for you. If you haven't seen them before, or you haven't used them, or sorry, if I haven't seen them, but if you start using them, trust me, you'll, you'll see a, a change in the way you operate and how quick you can get things done versus the way we do things now, which, and I'm sure a lot of you are doing things fantastically and you're moving through and you're hustling and you're, and you're bustling, but this just makes your life a little bit easier. You know, I, I prefer to get things, I know changes are gonna happen. I know the client's gonna demand something. I wanna get done as quickly as possible so that I can I can go back to focusing on making sure that my cues are being done properly. And not so much I'm focusing on that scene that I created. I need to now manipulate all this content because of one change, you know, versus you want me to change what or add what? No problem, give me a couple of seconds. Boom, boom, done. And now I'm back to focusing on switching between full screen iMag, full screen PowerPoint or my template, not constantly worried about modifying X, Y, Z, or if I'm in a scenario where it has to be this way, I'm going to get full focus of the show and then go to this template, go to the scene, give a couple of seconds to maybe the pre-pro side for the green room, get them set up, ready to go. Um, totally plausible with this setup, totally plausible with the way you're doing with the templates. If you can work a little bit more effectively, more smoothly, and just take stress off of yourself, uh, you know, it's a win-win situation for you, for the client, for everything else going on. So I got nothing else to give. At this point, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you guys have any feedback, anything you want me to dive into, let me know now. If not, I'm going to sign off, and you guys have a great show for the next couple of days. Cool. Thanks. So... We will get this to you guys uh, in your emails later t later this week. Um, again, any, any questions, let me know. Sarah, thanks for being here so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope this helps work. Help out. If you guys have any questions, you know how to reach me, AV Educate, Evolve Technology. I'm a phone call, an email away. Please let me know how you guys use them. I love hearing the feedback. The couple of friends that I do that have them, um, I have great success with them. They've been really cool. As Ed could tell you, they're, they're a great workflow, but um, Honestly, I love the feedback on it. Um, I, I put a lot of love and passion to these things, and it honestly, really, really does help out make things easier. And I have a couple of clients who have kept me on because I have these, um, and it's just really easy to implement. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys create your own templates, your own SOPs, your own workflows, and I'd love to see them and get, get a little behind the scenes as well. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one.